Hey folks, Joseph Isabora here, doing another movie review this week. It's a mystery, suspenseful thriller that's also disturbing that came out on July 9th, 1999, and that is the film Arlington Road. It's a story about what was it like if your next door neighbor suddenly has a dark secret of his own that one man suddenly discovers which will turn into a paranoia nightmare. Well that's what Jeff Bridges had discovered since he's a college professor you know, actually uh, teaching a class involving terrorism and he begins to suspect that his next door neighbor isn't exactly what he seems. In fact it turns out that he's actually a mad bomber. Yep. And he's played by T Tim Robbins right here. Um, it's a pretty underrated flick. It came out in the summer. In fact, originally it was supposed to be released by Polygram Films or Polygram Film Entertainment, which which you could choose. It was supposed to come out on January of 1999, but unfortunately the company went under. It was being purchased by Universal Pictures, which was merged with uh, Seagram and Son, which is an alcoholic beverage company. Yeah, just like how Columbia Pictures was bought by Coca-Cola, yeah, a soft drink uh, beverage company, <laughs> in that sort of way. But unfortunately, due to the tragedies that was going on uh, during the 90s, especially uh, Columbine, they couldn't pick up the film. Uh, it sat on the shelf for a little while before another studio picked it up and that was uh, Sony under their new, at the time, then new uh, Screen Gems label which is right here as you can see on the spine if I can get it close. Uh, you can even see it on right here. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and as you know, uh, Screen Gems uh, was a television division that started uh, in the 40s, the late 40s, and that eventually became Columbia Pictures Television in 1974. Because that's where they brought us shows like Bewitch, I Dream of Jeannie, uh, Father Knows Best, uh, The Flintstones, uh, along with The Jetsons, when they had to deal with Hanna-Barbera. Yeah, they, they have worked on all the Hanna-Barbera shows. All that come to mind. But uh, the company suddenly uh, resurrected in 1998 and came to be in 1999 when they released their first film called Limbo with David Strathern and Mary Elizabeth Masratonio. Yeah, I have that film, by the way. It's a DVD copy. Um, but this is their second film that was released by Screen Gems. And it teams up with uh, Lakeshore Entertainment. Yeah, long before they they had a relationship by working on the Underworld films. That's right. They they teamed up together to work on the Underworld films that I really love. Well, the the franchise alone. But but this would have been the first film that they teamed up for Polygram before Screen Gems took over. So yeah. But that's another reason why they, they had trouble trying to release this movie because of the tragedies that was going on, including Columbine, which happened in April. So they were going to release this in May, but they suddenly postponed to uh, July instead, so hoping this will do well. Um, it did uh, made its profit, only made like $41.1 million worldwide. Out of its 31 million budget, wow, 31 million dollars. That was pretty high for for a thriller like this, because <laughs> it does seem pretty low. But I guess that's probably where the money went. Maybe from the explosions, and well, it's not enough, of course. And maybe the some of the scenes here and there that went into that cost a lot of money. Plus, you got a interesting cast right here. I mean, not only do you get Jeff Bridges and Tim Robbins, but you also get uh, uh, 
So Joan Cusack playing his wife um, in a very uh, rare um, dramatic role of hers because she usually does comedies. I mean, she's also the older sister of John Cusack. So he, he, she really did pull it off very well, too. I mean, considering, you know, she's very uh, perky in a way, but she's very nice. So it's very different from her. Yeah, she's in the back, of course. And you can see uh, Joe Bridges. And you can even have the menu right there, too. This is what the DVD would look like. Yeah, it does have um, just a few extras. Um, it has the commentary with director Mark Pellington, who also directed the movie uh, Going All the Way. That was his first film. But I think he also worked on music videos or short films. And he had... Um, yeah, so he, he did a commentary with uh, Jeff Bridges, the star. It would have been nice if they had Tim Robbins and Joan Cusack in there. Uh, of course, it also has Hope Davis, and as well as uh, Mason Gamble from Dennis the Menace. Yeah, he's in this. Uh, even the Spencer Treat Clark, who later teamed up with Tim Robbins in another film called Mystic River later on. Hard to believe. And Robert Gossett, uh, who is from 91210. So it's uh, very interesting. An interesting thriller that um, almost kept me on the edge of my seat, but but it did have a slow build up as it turned out. But hey, that's how Mysteries was going. And ha But it does have some twists and turns that you never thought this would happen. And it's it's kind of strange the way they did it but <laughs> it's also one of the rarest movies where yes and this is one of the biggest ones was that the hero doesn't save the day the villain actually won yeah it's amazing isn't it also the the screenwriter um, Aaron Kruger yeah who's become very uh, household now I mean because he's now doing a lot of movies that he's been written. I mean, he wrote The Brothers Grimm, which I really love. It was directed by Terry Gilliam with Matt Damon and the late, great Heath Ledger. Love that film. But he also went on to write the sequels to the Transformers movies. Yeah, starting with Revenge of the Falling. He then wrote uh, the first movie. But I guess that's what explains it, too. And He also co-wrote... Uh, Ghost in the Shell, the, the live action movie. So he had Help in Hand. He also did Screen Free, uh, Dracula 2000, which was bad, and Subwaters. Interesting enough, uh, Aaron Kruger's uh, script for the film actually won him an award for the Academy of Motion Picture of Arts and Science, uh, Nicole Fellowship, in 1996. So. It's hard to believe that uh, that script alone, that took him a lot of time and energy to do so, would actually won him that. And it finally got filmed by um, a very interesting director. And, of course, the movie also dealt with terrorism, too, because they even show events of what was going on uh, during the 90s. Like, for example, the Mad Bomber. They even show a picture of him. They even show uh, a clip of the, the Oklahoma City bombing that happened that killed several people over there. It was one of the biggest tragedies at the time. Also, uh, the Waco siege in Texas. Yeah, very disturbing. So he's pretty big. Uh, Mark Pellington's still directing movies, granted. He's, he's doing films like uh, Henry Poole is Here, um, he did the Mothman Prophecies. Um, and just recently, he just did two films. Um, like uh, Nostalgia. That's a recent movie. And he also did the movie uh, The Last Word. Uh, with uh, Shirley MacLaine and Amanda Sidfried. Yeah. He also directed U2 3D. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, he, he did. Um, he actually did some short films and 
music videos, and he also did some television too. But I think he's a very underrated director. Yeah, it really shows. This is what the the DVD looks like right here. Yeah, here's a booklet that says "Fear Thy Neighbor." Right here, and there's the scene selections. And look at that. It has all the information you need. Uh, but anyway, let, let's get to the film. Uh, it stars Jeff Bridges once again, along with Tim Robbins, Joan Cusack, Holt Davis, Spencer Treat Clark, uh, Mason Gamble. Robert Gossett, Stanley Anderson, and Jordan Craig. It's written by Aaron Kruger and it's directed by Mark Pellington. The movie begins when we meet a widower and a college history professor um, at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. named Michael Faraday, who's played by Jeff Bridges who also has a son named Grant, who's played by Spencer Tree Clark, and a girlfriend who's uh, a college graduate uh, from the same university, Book Wolf, who's played by Holt Davis. On this one particular day, which is completely disturbing, was when he was driving around down the road until he, he encounters a young boy Turns out that his name is Bradley, who's played by Mason Gamble. He was staggering around on the road. I started walking very slowly, and you begin to see a very shocked uh, look on his face. But then, once he was walking around slowly, you begin to see tiny blood drops uh, on his sneakers. It turns out that um, he had a a huge horrible injury on his hand it was burned very badly and it was bleeding to death that suddenly Michael decided to rush him to the hospital but he doesn't know his name and that's where we get this uh, very intense uh, flashy intro of the movie which looked really cool the way they did it but they even put in a, a song in the film that made it more and very uh, disturbed and tense right there. So that's when we got to meet the parents of Oliver and Cheryl Lane. Both are played by Tim Robbins and Joan Cusack. So they were actually the parents uh, of the son, Bradley. They, they soon discover that they're actually neighbors next door at Arlington Road. And soon the families have became best friends. So they begin to hang out together, you know, do whatever they want. And, and then their son suddenly joins a, a Boy Scout group called the Discoverers. So unfortunately, Fane just seems so perfect for them, considering after he saved his life of, of Bradley, that soon becomes a very big suspicion. I mean, after all, since uh, Michael Faraday does teach a class at George uh, Washington University about terrorism. Yes, and this is where we get to see with several of his students uh, showing like slideshows and, and all these other clues and involving the terrorist attacks, which involves uh, a young man who works at a telephone company and and suddenly he, he actually blew up the entire building filled with many people inside, including a daycare center. Yeah, it, it was an office building. It, it actually killed several people. So, uh, some of them were injured, were rushed to the hospital. Which, believe it or not, was actually the Oklahoma City bombing that was happening back in 1995. Uh, it was a terrible tragedy that happened coming from two mad bombers. I think there was a third one, but 
But I know there was two of them. Yeah. And that really led to what was going on, especially since his wife um, was an FBI agent. Um, and there was a standoff that happened that got her killed, uh, along with several of his uh, crew. And while his uh, FBI partner, uh, Whiff Carver, is played by Robert Gossett, as he lives uh, and remembers that tragedy that happened. But suddenly he begins to suspect once he went inside uh, Oliver's house and he, he begins to look that, that Oliver is actually uh, working on a building project, which that means he's going to be building shopping malls uh, in the area. So that's where he's, he suspects some of those uh, floor plans and all these uh, sketches and all of that uh, c coming along. But it turns out that this is what led to this dark secret, was that all these floor plans that he has are not for building shopping malls and many other buildings out there. It turns out that he has a plan to actually explode every single building out there, which includes uh, many victims around. He's a mad bomber. And... Oliver Lane is not even his real name. In fact, his real name is actually William Fettermore. And his wife, Cheryl, is actually um, his partner. Yeah, Cheryl Fettermore. And, of course, still his wife. So that led to that one big secret that causes uh, Michael to be totally obsessed. And that's when he's trying to uh, tell uh, Wit about what's going on. And, and he's trying to look at uh, all the secrets and mysteries involving him since he begins to find uh, some newspaper articles on, on a microfilm. He was like trying to search uh, his name on all the records, all these criminal records that he had on the internet. And that's just what led to all this happening. But later on, Michael had took um, all the students to a field trip uh, talking about the standoff that happened, which got his wife killed. Which, that's where we, we meet a young boy that's somehow brought in a shotgun because he was scared. He was, he was going after the family, and they had a violent shootout right there. Killed um, and injured several of the... The, the teens, we then learned that his wife got shot by a woman holding a child. Yeah, she had a shotgun, shot her in cold blood. It's messed up. So it only gets worse when Oliver suddenly discovered uh, his secret from Michael after he found the yearbook, uh, pictures of him and all of that. And that's where it becomes uh, a huge problem for Michael because that's where the paranoia starts. I mean, he suddenly uh, takes his son. Um, his girlfriend somehow got killed after she, she began to discover the secret behind Oliver by spying on him. We learned that he, he was actually working for the guys and they had a, a delivery bands and going all the way from the parking garage to the uh, the business headquarters there. Um, then uh, she began to doubt him that um, it turns out that Michael was right the whole time. Uh, she called on the payphone until uh, Cheryl shows up in, in a very creepy uh, fashion, which led to what happened to um, to Brooke at the end when she died of a car crash. So now he's all alone with his son, even though his son actually um, had been sent to a Boy Scout uh, with Bradley the whole time. So he's all alone. He's still trying to find out what's going on. But then he began to s discover that he actually did have a phone call. He, he didn't receive any calls until um, Wood actually mentioned that. Because he was trying to find out about Oliver or Williams' uh, 
criminal track record. But then he begins to discover that there was a there's a telephone man that was just uh, working on the the telephone poles and all of all of that. So then he begins to see something suspicious. So he begins to to race and begin to find out where's his son at. So it almost seems like his son's being kidnapped. He begins to talk to someone who knows about um, William. And one thing leads to another. This is where it led to the climax that was going on, which he begins to find out that his son is inside the band, and and the band actually has a bomb inside, and and it was like, wow. This this is where it starts to twist and turns uh, right there. Um, I'm gonna leave it at that because uh, it, I don't want to give too much away at the end because this is one of the biggest ones that ever happened. But this was definitely well made, uh, well done, uh, very highly intelligent in a way. I mean, the way they, they came up with this idea about what's going to happen. But yeah, again, the movie was very disturbing at times. I mean, we're beginning to see you know, children in danger in, in, a, in a whole different way. And, and all the dark sequence that went into that causes this to become a paranoia for Michael. But uh, the way it turns out, um, it was very effective. But the cast was very good. I mean, Jeff Bridges did a great job playing the role, I mean, of the college history professor who begins to know too much about, about terrorism and how all the, the people involved were had done all these um, very horrific acts. It, I mean, it, it's really hard to explain these days, but because it's it really affects everyone, because especially what's going on in today's world. I mean, it, it's very scary. I mean, it, it could happen to everyone. So it's kind of hard to talk about films like this when, when it comes to this uh, situation. Um, but anyway, Jeff Bridges was very good in the film. He definitely pulled it off very well. I mean, this is a different role for him, he, almost similar to the role that he played in Blown Away, which is another underrated film that he did. So it seemed like it's almost like he's playing that same character, but only quite different. Uh, Tim Robbins was totally uh, menacing as uh, Oliver, or William, if you like to refer to him, because that's the secret. But, uh, I mean, he started out as a nice guy. I mean, it really shows that, you know, he really cares for everyone and the neighbors around. Underneath that dark secret of his, I mean, he's, he definitely pulled this role really well shows how much of a good actor Tim Robbins is and I love his role too but I really bought it and of course uh, Joan Cusack in in a very uh, interesting role I mean because usually she she does a lot of comedies but this time she she just plays uh, a perky type of uh, wife of his and plays it very well I mean especially with these creepy smiles that she does Hope Davis um, is great. I mean, even though her role was pretty underwritten, because, I mean, you basically would expect to believe. I mean, at first she doesn't believe him, but at times, you know, she begins to find out already. Uh, Robert Gossett uh, is also good as um, Whit Carver, who is an FBI partner of his wife. It's very thrilling the way they they really uh, shot this movie. I mean, it has some nice, beautiful cinematography that they put into it. Uh, it just looks, uh, it really fits the mood straight of how the, the story was going. And it even has um, an interesting score that was done by Tomand Dandy. Um, also, uh, Angelino uh, Balamente. So yeah, they, they did the score for the movie, so it gives it a, 
a frightening feel to it, a very dark mood into it. So that was really uh, interesting. But, and it was edited pretty well too. It, it really uh, set the mood straight. It was like only a few minutes um, into it, but uh, it, it really flows very well for a two-hour film that has a slow build-up. I mean, it, it pay, the pacing is as slow as it can get, but it, still it works. There are deleted scenes, but it's only just a few, but it's not available on DVD nor Blu-ray either. Yes, there is a Blu-ray release for the film uh, that was released by Sony. Uh, it was later repackaged by Image. Um, but it's only found on YouTube. Um, I'm surprised I found the uh, some of the scenes that, that came from a work print. Um, quality is actually pretty decent, though. I mean, when it was uploaded, so you, you could find it too. Just search for extended scene and and um, and two deleted scenes. That's not in, not featured on the DVD and Blu-ray. There is an alternate uh, ending in, in the movie where it just shows more of uh, of the ending of what really happened, but I know we don't want to give that away too much. Uh, but still, um, I really enjoyed the film. Um, it really got to me. It, it's one of those rare um, intelligent thrillers that you have to see to believe. I think it's well made well casted and definitely the kind of thriller that that really take your mind straight out of it. So anyway, I give Arlington Road four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later. Bye.